Well, hello everyone. I know it's been a while since I posted a video, but I had a kind of exciting pickup here recently that I wanted to share. And before I show you what it is, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some of my history with it. And uh, this goes back quite a ways. And what I have is the 1979 winter catalog for Heathkit. And this is pretty relevant to what I'm going to show because what I've been hoping to acquire for many, many years, uh, I happened to uh, pick up recently. So uh, in 1979, where I would have been was in high school. And at that time, I was learning how to program on a PDP-8, which, if you don't know, is an old octal-based computer. And maybe I'll go ahead and drop in a photo here so you know what I'm talking about. But it was pretty much a setup with... Um, a teletype and a paper tape reader and they had a front panel with switches that you would flip uh, to enter um, octal and uh, I know back then uh, my thoughts of actually owning a computer myself were all tied into how expensive it was and realizing that I'd probably never be able to afford it but it didn't stop me from looking in the Heathkit catalog at that time and I always um, ordered the Heathkit catalog being sure that I had the newest one and could read about all the cool kits that they had and if you uh, aren't familiar with Heathkit um, a lot of the products they had could either be bought in kit form or fully assembled uh, some only in kit form but they sold all kinds of electronics TVs stereos ham radio gear and then computers and uh, a computer that I was really interested in at that time was the PDP or not the PDP although yes I'd love to have a PDP 8 um, was the um, Heathkit H8 which also was an octal um, type of a computer where it had um, uh, an octal display and keypad and it intrigued me because that's kind of what I was used to that was the first computer that I'd learned to program on was an octal-based computer with the PDP-8. And uh, back in 1979, of course, looking at the prices of these systems, not that they're cheap now, but as a uh, high schooler back in the 1970s, even getting a very base starter unit for $379 was pretty much unobtainium. Um, I was probably more concerned with um, getting an automobile. Um, but still, flipping through the catalog, looking at the computer, of course you could buy the disk drive or full systems with a, with a terminal. It was something that I was always um, hoping to have. But of course, those times have come and gone, and uh, many computers have, have been between here and there. Um, but recently, I finally had the opportunity to pick up a Heathkit H8 computer. Um, after all this time and uh, it's a pretty exciting find for me it's kind of one of my personal holy grails um, probably right up there next to getting a PDP 8e um, like I used in high school if I ever were able to acquire one of those um, that would be great fun uh, and I thought what I would do today is just to kind of show you around what it is that I picked up and the condition it's in um, what cards are in it just some general information about the machine. So let's put this catalog away and I'm going to go ahead and grab the first part of the H8. Well this thing is certainly a little bit of a beast and uh, I will change angle on it here a little bit for you so you can see the front. Uh, it's not in perfect condition. Uh, it's got uh, missing a little bit of the tag there on the H8 label. Got a little bit of corrosion and uh, paint loss and chipping on the front. Uh, but overall, it's not in too bad a shape. And there's that octal keypad. So you won't, you notice that's not like a hex keypad where you have letters A through F on there as well as the numbers. Um, so you just need for octal, you just need um, one through nine or zero through nine. And then I'm going to spin it around here. Uh, 
because on the back it's kind of interesting. We can see the tags for what were originally in this system and it has a little bit different configuration now. But originally it looked like this system came with a um, H85 card and an H83 card. And then we also show here an H81. Then we have a tag up here for an H84. And uh, also, let me slide it over here just a wee bit. Um, this kit shows that it was at least at a Heathkit Electronics Center on 11-1 of 1978. And it has a service number as well as a model number. There are other tags like this inside the unit. So um, I don't know exactly what that means, if it was in for service or if this was a Heathkit assembled unit and, and had that in it. Um, or had the tag posted on it for that. Some of you know, might know that better than I. But um, what I want to do is to flip this around, uh, take the top off of it, and then look at what is actually in the unit as it sits now. It's had some changes and upgrades over the years. Now I have not done anything to this unit yet. I have not attempted, attempted to uh, turn it on. I haven't cleaned it up. I want to uh, approach this project uh, pretty carefully. Sometimes these old computers, when they've sat for many, many years, uh, they are a little bit hazardous in terms of bringing them back online without damaging them. Overall, it's a bit dusty inside but in not in terrible shape. Um, of course, the transformer, as you'd expect, has gotten just a wee bit rusty over time, um, probably just for moisture in the air because the unit itself is, is actually pretty good. Um, we can kind of see in here that we've got the, the front panel card. There is a, a CPU card here labeled 85-1938-1. Behind that, there is a WH8-64 dynamic RAM card. Um, so originally, if I understand the numbering on this right from what was on the back label, it looks like this originally had a, an 8K uh, RAM card in it, a static RAM card. Now we have a 64K dynamic RAM card. There is the controller board, which I believe is the uh, H17 controller board. Um, this unit did come with a dual drive 817, uh, dual five and a quarter floppy disk drive, which we'll look at in a second. And then it has the H8-4 multi-port serial card. It does not have the original I.O. card uh, that the machine came with that is on the number tag in the back, which would be nice to have because that actually has a cassette interface. So I'm going to have to come up with something else in terms of getting some tape input uh, into this because I believe what we're going to be dealing with is uh, probably way before I get the disk drives running uh, I'll be probably working off tape um, and this also comes with the um, H17 terminal or the excuse me the uh, H9 terminal and we'll have a look at that in a minute too so got the H8 the H17 disk drive and the H9 terminal all together But uh, a good place to start is that uh, everything is here. It all appears to be complete. I don't see any obvious signs of damage or um, any real extensive corrosion um, on the boards other than what you'd expect, you know, kind of the traditional old um, kind of um, darkening, kind of the uh, tarnishing of some of the pins but we can clean that up on the ICs where that's a problem. It does not have the gold connectors on the backplane board, so that's something that will be a bit of an issue potentially, and I think that there will be a fair amount of work to do to this before I actually um, try bringing the power up. 
I'm actually going to go through the original uh, H8 assembly manual and then all the manuals on the cards. So I'll pull the cards out completely. Um, I'll kind of follow through those old Heathkit instructions to make sure that everything's assembled and wired correctly, um, especially with the power, uh, the CPU uh, main power section back here. Um, you never know with, um, well, and I'll have to do that not just with the CPU unit here. I'll have to do that with all the units. I'll start out by checking the power. But you never know um, how this can go. And I certainly don't want all the cards plugged in as I try to bring the power supply back to life. Um, I probably am going to try bringing it up very slowly, um, plugging this into a variac and just uh, over um, many hours or even several days, just slowly bringing the power up, seeing if we can reform any capacitors that are in here and see how that goes because there's just a big massive capacitor under this cover in the back. And uh, it'd be nice to save that if possible. But if we have to do work on it, we have to do work on it. That's just fine. Um, but this is kind of what we have with the base unit. And uh, looking at this controller card, yeah, I guess this is the card for the H17. I know there was an H37 card, and this doesn't really identify itself um, one way or the other, this controller board. It just simply says controller board. Uh, but I suspect that this is the probably the um, controller board for the H17, the original board. All right, so that's what we have here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, clear this away, and then I'm going to uh, pull up the next unit. I'll pull up the H9 terminal. We'll kind of take a look at that a little bit. All right, the uh, next piece of the next piece of hardware that was uh, part of the H8 lot is this uh, H9 video terminal. And uh, overall, it appearance-wise looks pretty good. With something like this, I realize that there's probably no way to know what condition it's really in, um, rather than to kind of really go through it and approach it cautiously. Um, I know that the uh, tube looks good, the uh, CRT, in terms of there's not any strange uh, shadowing or fogging on here that would indicate that it's been necked or anything like that. There are some uh, bits and pieces of something sliding around in the bottom that I'm not sure what it is, but um, I'm not too concerned because the way that this is set, there is a um, bit of a gap right here in the plastic. It's a little bit bowed that sits in front of the, um, the CRT. So um, things can get in there and uh, move around. It sounds like it could be like a small screw or a washer. Hopefully not anything um, too concerning. Um, the keyboard in general um, appears to be in pretty good shape. Um, the, the key labeling is well intact. Um, the case is, is very clean and good. Um, you know, no chipping, scratches, things like that. So. Um, I'm actually pretty pleased to have this as well as the main H8 unit. Um, I'm sure that uh, this will be a similar kind of a project. Uh, I kind of want to almost kind of pull this apart a bit, uh, not to really you know, like re-kit it, but to pull it apart into components and then go through the original Heathkit build guides. Um, some of those Heathkit build guides were really good because they had um, different voltage and signal checkpoints so that as you built this the, the thing up, you could kind of check it as you go. And uh, that can kind of give you an idea uh, now what kind of shape that it's in or if there are problems, where might those problems be? And we can kind of get them addressed and fixed. So again, I'm going to treat this very cautiously. This isn't one of those kind of computers that you just take it home and plug it into an outlet and fire everything up and and hope for the best. I, I really want to be careful with this. My goal is to get all of this equipment working and I kind of have two schools of thought. One is I want to keep all the original stuff and actually have this thing boot from its floppy drive, display on its terminal, and be able to show it off at um, some of the computer events that I attend. And uh, I think it'd be a lot of fun to show it in its original condition. But I'd also kind of like it to be a bit of a hobby machine and so I would also like to take the approach of getting some of the more modern um, accessories for it, getting a, a compact flash reader, um, 
so that we don't have to use the original disk drives and such as much. Um, and I'm fine um, letting this terminal rest, for example. Uh, maybe just use this at shows and then um, just use a traditional um, terminal emulation software on another computer to connect up to it. So I don't want to put high mileage on some of the more uh, delicate components, uh, but I do want to use it. I don't want to just have this out for computer shows. All right, let me go grab the last piece, which is the H17 drive. Uh, we'll take a look at that really quick and see what kind of condition it's in. Um, I haven't really popped the top on that to see which drives are in it. Um, so this is mostly kind of a first look. I got it home and haven't really done a lot here with it yet. All right, this is the last of the pieces of hardware that uh, came with a lot. And this is a uh, dual disc. So it's the H17 dual disc drive unit. And uh, again, I haven't really looked much at this yet. Um, this is going to be something that I know is a bit of a challenge to get working because uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, these use the old um, hard sector floppy disks, which are uh, difficult to get a hold of in short supply. And there we can see the drives. It looks like we've got a loose or at least a screw out here on the where the power lead connects up. Looks like we've had some work done there. We've got a, uh, oh yeah, we have uh, something broken here. It looks like it's been replaced with uh, clip leads. So we'll, we'll have to uh, figure out what to do about that. And that is actually the fuse holder that is uh, broken. So we'll need to repair the fuse holder. And it's interesting, it's, it's all there. The component is, is complete. And it looks like to use this, what somebody did was they um, clipped to one side of the fuse and then they clipped that up here to the power switch. So that's kind of an interesting workaround. Um, but uh, yeah. Glad we didn't turn, try to plug that in. And uh, these drives both say uh, Wanko, and it's a model, model 82. So it's got a pair of Wanko model 82 floppy drives, and I'm I'm certain those are the ones that do take the hard sector disks. So, yeah, that'll be fun to figure out when we get to that point. Um, so this unit looks like it, it needs a little bit of work. It's had a brutalized fuse holder, and then uh, I'm not sure what condition it's in beyond that. A little bit of refuse down in here. Um, bits of uh, paper shredding. So, um, but interestingly, it is pretty clean. You know, it... Um, yeah, it's really a pretty clean unit inside. So I think uh, the, that at least we have going for it. So basically I have a complete system here. Um, the only thing that I have that is missing uh, that I can see and everything here, it's got most of the cabling and such with it too, uh, but there is a cable that goes to the terminal that uh, that I'll need to put back together. Uh, it's basically just missing, um, but it doesn't look like it's going to be anything uh, too exotic, so um, I'll be able to get that together. But one thing at a time. First, we'll uh, start out with the base unit, um, get that up and running, make sure that it's 100%, uh, then probably move to the terminal, and I may jump straight to um, getting something like a compact, compact flash adapter for this, just to get it booted up, um, to get it in um, the HeathKit OS and, and make sure that all of that works. 
And then I'll, I'll tackle this, this disk drive unit here and uh, figure out uh, what we do with that because I, I really would love to be running off this uh, when I take the computer to shows, which is my ultimate hope for it. Um, but there's a long road between here and there of kind of cleaning it up, checking it out, um, and I'm certain with an old machine like this sitting as long as it had that it's going to have problems and uh, there'll be a lot of work to do. But that's my recent pickup and uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed um, seeing the system. I know I've been looking for one of these in the wild for years and feel um, very happy and excited to have finally uh, gotten a hold of one. So, well, that's it for now. I do have some more interesting pickups that uh, actually came from the same place. I picked this up at uh, VCF West in Mountain View, and uh, I will uh, show you some of the other things that I got in future videos. And thanks again for watching.